Hello, I'm Jill at Ingvid, and today's lesson is on different registers of vocabulary. So, what do I mean by registers? Okay, so um, you can use different words that all mean the same thing, but they have a different effect and a different style, uh, and often they divide up into rather formal language that sounds very formal and sophisticated, um, maybe academic, that kind of language. Um, then you have a neutral word that it's just an ordinary word for something. It doesn't have a particular style. Uh, and then you have informal, uh, which can often be a sort of colloquial slang word um, that you would only use in a, an in, informal group with friends and family and so on. So um, it's good to know uh, what register you're using in different circumstances. Uh, so often the formal words tend to be uh, written down in documents, uh, reports and letters, official letters and things like that. Um, or academic, you know, essays and so on. Um, then neutral in just ordinary everyday um, language, uh, but not, not trying to be too informal, just in a neutral way, perhaps with people um, you may not know very well. Uh, so you just want to have a kind of neutral kind of vocabulary uh, that doesn't have too much of a style with it. Uh, but then if you're with friends and you have a particular way of speaking and you use particular words uh, to be casual um, and friendly and relaxed, uh, you would use the more informal words for that um, that are used within your group of, of friends and so on. Okay, so let's just have a look at some examples then. So, uh, first of all, with food, if you want to describe um, if you're enjoying the food, you like it, it tastes good, uh, how would you describe it? So, um, in a formal way, you might say it's delicious or appetizing. Um, if you were in, with some friends in a restaurant and you were eating, I think if you said, oh, this food is very appetizing, uh, your friends might think, oh, that's a strange word to use. So it's not the kind, that's the thing with the formal words. They're not the kind of word you would use in a conversation with friends. Um, so you have to um, be careful what the context is. Uh, you might only use it in writing rather than in speaking. Um, delicious isn't quite so formal. Uh, this food is delicious. Uh, you can just about say that in a in a social setting, and it's okay. And uh, it's used in advertising too. I think advertising slogans, uh, delicious um, apples or whatever. So uh, it's not that f formal, but appetizing is more formal. Uh, so, what about if you want to just use a neutral word to um, to describe the food, if it tastes nice? You can just say it's tasty. Well, this food is very tasty. And that's a fairly neutral way of saying it, um, to say something nice about the food. Okay. Um, then if, if you're in a much more informal setting, or you may be with children, that's, that's another thing. The words you use with children may be different from the words you would use with adults. So to describe food as yummy, I think it's more the kind of word you would use with, uh, with a child. Um, you know, especially if you're trying to persuade a child to eat something. You know, you might have something on a spoon and say, oh, come on, it's really yummy. It's yummy. Um, so you would use that more with a child, I think, in a very informal way. Um, okay. 
So moving on to the next um, example. So different words for looking, looking at things um, in a more sophisticated way. You would observe or perceive, and again, you wouldn't use this in no normal conversation um, because it sounds much too formal and sophisticated. So you might write it in a very official document. Um, you know, we observed that uh, if you're doing a scientific experiment or something, it was observed that uh, there was a reaction in the test tube, something like that. And it's a rather academic, scientific piece of writing. Um, and uh, to perceive as well uh, how something is perceived, um, how people see it. Um, but it's quite formal. Uh, so then the neutral ones are just to look or to see. Very, very simple and very short little words as well. Okay. And then in the more informal way, uh, you could say to, to peek or to peep. So to peek is, it's a bit like, you know, looking closely like this. Oh, let me have a peep at that. Or I just want to peek at that. So um, it, it's quite a sort of colloquial um, way of saying it there. Okay. So moving on, um, if something's good, well, you say in a neutral way, it's good, fine. Again, very short words. Uh, but in the more formal way, you might say, oh, that's excellent or splendid. So longer words, excellent and splendid. Um, you might do these also to be a bit jokey. Oh, that's really excellent, I think. That's splendid. And it sounds as if you're you're joking a little bit. You're putting on an act. Uh, either that or they're just very formal ways of saying it again. And then in the more informal way, um, you would use the kind of slang or colloquial words like cool, brilliant, okay, for, for the same thing. Um, okay, so then the opposite of good is bad. So we've just got bad for the neutral one. Again, a very short word. So a really sophisticated word to use would be detestable because to de detest something means to hate something. So if it's detestable, oh, that behavior is detestable. So if you're describing how someone is behaving, um, maybe someone on public transport, they're they're putting their feet up on the seats and that their muddy boots are making the seats dirty where other people will want to sit down. That's detestable to do that. So that would be someone who's really annoyed and they want to sound very superior um, about that kind of behaviour. Um, oh, that's so detestable, terrible. So that sort of idea. Um, Okay, and so bad is just the neutral. And then a little bit more informal, you'd say, oh, that's horrible to do that. Or that's gross. Oh, gross. Um, disgusting, that sort of feeling. Um, it's a bit more dramatic sounding, a bit more emotional. Okay. Um, and then finally, uh, talking about money. So we've just got money or cash as the neutral words. Um, a little bit more formal would be funds or funding because it, it doesn't sound so much like money. You know, sometimes people don't like to talk about money too much. They might think it's a bit undignified or something. Um, they don't want to use the word money um, it might sound as if they're a bit obsessed with money. So they might use funds or funding as a word, a word that doesn't sound so much like what it means uh, to sort of get away from having to mention money. So maybe a bank or a, an investment company might talk about funds and funding uh, rather than 
saying the word money or writing the word money. Okay. Um, and then in the informal way between friends, um, dosh and redis are really sort of slang terms. Um, you know, uh, have you got the redis? Um, or I, I'm a bit short of dosh today. I need some more dosh. So these words go back in history a little bit. Um, but um, redis, I think, is quite a good one because you have to have your cash ready to pay for anything. So it's quite a, a good description of money, really. Uh, you need it to be ready. OK, so um, I hope that's a, a good a set of examples for you of how you can have words uh, in different registers from formal to neutral to informal. You might like to think of some other categories and uh, see if you can find words that all mean the same, uh, but they belong in different registers. OK, uh, so uh, we have a quiz on this topic. If you'd like to test your knowledge, uh, just go to the website ingvid.com and give the quiz a try. And uh, thank you for watching and hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.